In this video, I'll show you how to set up and use the gate.io app, make some deposits, trade some crypto, and then withdraw your money if you want to as well. As you can see, I've got the app up and running already. If you don't, just download the app on your phone, and then an email address and a password is all you need. Go and set that up, and it will let you into the app like this. Now, if you click the link below when you're signing up, you can get deposit and trading bonuses, $10,000 deposit and trading bonus, and also $18 of spot trading fees will be paid if you deposit, I think, $20. That was the offer I had, but you can check the link below. And when you sign up, you can see the deposit and trading bonuses when you're watching this video. But the first thing you need to do in order to go ahead and trade is set up your KYC. That means you need to give them an ID card or a passport so they know who you are, and then you can start trading. Now, it will push you to do that, but you can do it manually. Top left, go to your icon here, and then just click on your username that you've got. And then it says here, down here, KYC, right? So click that if you're not verified already. There will be a button here that says verify now. Go ahead and click that. All it's going to do is ask you to take a scan of your ID document. A driving license, ID card, or passport are gonna be fine there. Go ahead and do that. And then it's going to ask you to scan your face as well so that your face is the same as your card document. You can see exactly how that uh, looks like. So prepare ID document for verification. Go ahead and scan it with your phone's camera. Once you've done that, it says under review. It took a couple of minutes for me, literally pretty quick. And you can see my ID is verified and I can go ahead and trade on the app. There's various different methods of securing your account as well. And if you want to make any withdrawals from the platform, you need to set up a funding password. So that password is going to be different than the password you created when you set up your account with your email. And that is given when you withdraw anything from the platform, you'll have to put that in. So the way that you set this up is go to your profile again in settings, and then go to security at the top, and you'll see your security levels. Now you can set up a pass key as well. I recommend doing that. That sets up a login to the app via your biometrics on your device. If you have an iPhone or an Android device, you can set that up through your cloud and it just scans your biometrics, either face ID or touch ID, and you don't need a password. Now in the future, they'll probably let you do lots of things with that passkey. For right now, I didn't find that passkey was ever used, but in the future, they may let you make withdrawals or log into the app with the passkey as well. Also, you can set up Google Authenticator right here as well if you use that one. The other thing that you'll need to set up, like I said, is the fun password. So if you scroll down, go to basic security and then fun password, they won't let you withdraw without this enabled. And once you change it or set it, they will put a block for 24 hours on your account for any withdrawals. So I recommend setting this up immediately so that that 24 hours expires before you wanting to withdraw any assets. You don't want to withdraw an asset and then have to set it up and wait another day. Trading fees on Gate start at 10 basis points, which is where Binance and Bybit start as well. Uh, you can see here, if you trade under 60,000 in trade volume in a month, then 10 basis points right here. Now, if you pay for fees in GT, which is Gate's exchange coin, then you get a slight discount here to nine basis points trading fees. Now, if you trade higher volumes, you get volume discounts, as you can see here. This is competitive with Binance and Bybit and OKX, uh, the starting fees, as you can see. Now, if you're trading futures as well, you get much lower fees, two to five basis points. Very, very low, and again, competitive with uh, most of the other exchanges that you might want to use uh, for trading futures. If you want to buy crypto on Gates, you can press the deposit icon in the top right-hand corner. So press that, and then you have a lot of the options here. We'll look at buying crypto first. So I'm gonna press the express option under buy crypto. And then from here it says, what asset do you want to buy? So for the most part, this is going to be card payments. And if you're in Europe, you can use SEPA transfers as well with euros, which is really good. If you're outside of Europe, I think you'll be stuck to card payments, which can be a little bit more expensive. So you can choose the asset that you want to buy. It defaults to USDT. That's a US dollar stable coin. So that's basically like buying the US dollar. You'll have USDT in there and that is one for one with the dollar. So that's not really like a crypto asset that you're buying and basically just buying crypto dollars at that point. Now, if you have USDT, you can do anything with that. You can trade it for any other coin. Uh, you can use it in futures very easily and you can withdraw it from the platform if you want to do that. But if you are looking to buy another crypto, for example, Bitcoin, then I would suggest just directly buying it here because if you buy USDT and that's in your account, well, then you have to then swap that for Bitcoin and you pay another trading fee. Even though it's very small, you might as well just directly buy the crypto asset that you're looking for if you wanna do that. So if you wanna buy a Bitcoin or something like that, just choose that asset and then you can choose the dollar amount that you want to buy. 
Now, if you want to buy a stable coin and switch it, you can do that as well. So for example, Bitcoin here, and I'm gonna buy $50 worth, buy BTC, and it's gonna show me the options that I can use. So I can use a debit or a credit card, and I can use Apple Pay. If you have Google Pay, that would be there as well. But just check out the fees here. The fees can be a little bit higher, anywhere from like two to 4%, something like that for cards. Now, if you can use uh, a SEPA transfer in euros, then what you'll get here is the bank details that you can send to. And you can set that up where you send in a SEPA transfer. It's gonna be lower fee if you can do that. If not, you'll have to pay on the cards. Now, you may not want to use Gate as an on-ramp either. There may be better on-ramps in your country. So you can figure out the best and cheapest method to on-ramp fiat currency into crypto. And then from there, once you have crypto in a crypto account, you can send those assets right into uh, Gate to trade with because Gate has very low trading fees, especially con uh, compared to most on-ramps. I'll show you how to deposit crypto into Gates then. So if you are using another on-ramp and you've on-ramped your cash into crypto, but the trading fees are that on-ramp are very expensive, you can just withdraw it from that exchange and send it to Gate to trade. If you have crypto in your own wallet, you can easily deposit it into Gates as well. It's all the same feature. We want to deposit crypto into the exchange. So press deposit again. Then I want to choose on-chain deposit here. That's if you have crypto assets somewhere else and you can go and withdraw them into Gate. So I've got some USDC on another platform. So I'm gonna press USDC here, or you can search for it as well, right? USDC or USDT, whatever you have. If you're wanting to uh, deposit Bitcoin, you can see BTC there. It's gonna give you your Bitcoin address. Now I'm gonna choose USDC, and you'll see with USDC that there are a lot of different options that I can use to send this in. So USDC is a stable coin, US dollar stable coin exists on many different chains. And so I can choose a chain to deposit it into gate um, and I'm gonna choose one chain here. So I'm gonna go over to my other exchange and you can see I've got some USDC. So I'm gonna press withdraw on this and I'm gonna send via crypto network. Now, if you're using Coinbase or Binance or anyone else, it doesn't matter. Go to your exchange if you have it there, press withdraw and then withdraw via crypto network and then it's gonna give you the options. Now you can see the networks here and I can choose them. I'm just gonna choose the cheapest chain. Now Binance let me send USDC for free as you can see here, so I can press that and then I can go back into Gate. Now I have to make sure that Gate can accept this asset on the network that I'm using. USDC on BNB chain, and you can see BNB smart chain right here is acceptable, and that is the deposit address. So if you're sending crypto into Gate, it has to be the same asset on the same chain. Gate has to accept the asset and the blockchain that you're sending it uh, from. So you just have to choose the same where you're sending it from and Gate, same asset, same blockchain. I'm gonna copy my address here, then I'm gonna go back into Binance, I'll paste that in like this. That's my address. I can send the max out in order to trade it. So press withdraw in your exchange, that sends it over to Gate, and that will use a blockchain transaction. It's free for me here. You may pay a few cents or something depending on the network that you're using, but that will be sent over to your Gate wallet address, and then you can use it in Gate. Now you can see that crypto has been deposited into my Gate account, I have a balance, and we can go ahead and trade that now. So go down to the trade feature right in the middle, and you can go ahead and trade one asset for another. Now, if you're using the buy crypto feature and you're just buying some Bitcoin or whatever other asset, you'll have that asset in your gate account and you don't need to trade it, it's just there for you. However, if you've got some stable coins, then you'll need to trade them into other assets. So we're in spot trading here. Up at the top left of the screen, you can see the currency trading pair. So you can find the asset that you want to trade. Gate supports you know, pretty much all assets, all major assets as you can see right here scrolling down, you can search for them here. So if I choose BTC, you can see there's 37 Bitcoin trading pairs. I've got Bitcoin against USDT and USDC, the two major stable coins, but you've got a bunch of other assets as well, some futures trading assets and uh, a few other things, right? Now BTC has a lot of trading pairs as well. You can see a lot of other assets trade against BTC. So if you have some Bitcoin and you wanna switch it into another asset, you can do it easily there by that trading pair. So a trading pair is basically one asset that you have and the other, other asset that you want. So you sell the asset that you have and the, you buy the asset that you want. For me, I'm just gonna trade Bitcoin against USDC because I've got USDC and that means that I can sell the asset that I have and buy the asset that I want. Now from here, we can go ahead and buy or sell, but I'll show you buying first. We want to choose either a market order or a limit order. You can see up here, limit and smart market. They're the two types of uh, main types of order we can use. A market order, is where you do not choose the price that you pay, but you choose the amount that you buy, right? So let's say I want to buy you know, this much 
of USDC and I can use this slider. It tells me exactly how much USDC that I have. And I say, well, I wanna buy $10 of Bitcoin, right? I don't know the price that I'm gonna trade at. But if you look to the right hand side, this is the market right here. Down at the bottom, you have buyers in green and you have sellers in red. And you can see the prices here. This white price in the middle is the mid price where buyers and sellers meet and actually trade. So when you use a market order, what you'll be doing is buying crypto from the cheapest seller. And the cheapest seller is the one down at the bottom here in red, the one closest to the mid price. That's the cheapest seller. He's actually showing us his order and saying, hey, I've got, to bit, I've, I've got some Bitcoin to sell and this is the price. And I can buy with a market order and take their price and exchange my USDC for Bitcoin. So I can go ahead and do that with a market order. Now a limit order is slightly different. A limit order is when you actually choose the price that you pay. So for example, I can choose a, a price to pay that is nowhere near the current market price. So let's say the current market price is around 93,800. Am I willing to pay that or not? Well, no, I'm not, I want to, a cheaper price. So I can choose my price now with a limit order. So I'm gonna try and pay 93,500 like this and press done. Now, as you can see, my price now that I'm willing to pay for one unit of Bitcoin is 93,500. And I'm gonna buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. I'm gonna buy 10 USDC worth. Because the market price is around 93,800, my bid is too low, right? The market price is 93,800. I say that I wanna buy at 93,500. Because there are other people willing to pay more than me, no seller is going to meet me at my price. However, I can put my limit order into the system and tell Gate, if the market moves and there are sellers that meet me, then we can trade at my limit price. A limit price is saying, trade at or better than the price that I set. So I'm gonna set this limit price at 93,500 and I'm gonna press buy BTC. And you should see down here that I have an order. My order is to buy Bitcoin at an exchange rate of 93,500 and the order amount that I set is around $10 worth, $10 worth, which is a tiny fraction of a Bitcoin. And that's it. Now I haven't traded yet because the market isn't there, right? I'm cheaper than the market. So what I can do is I can edit that order. So go down to the price, click the edit icon. You can change the price here. You can move it up, move it down. And if the market gets there, then it will trade. So I can cancel that as well. There's no fees for that because you haven't traded. You only pay a trading fee when you actually trade. So what I'm gonna do is show you a market order and show you how uh, a trade actually goes through. So we're gonna buy some, market order, buy BTC, press confirm, and that's bought. You can see the, at the top the order is now filled. It's immediate because I just took the best seller's price up at the top there, so I've actually bought that BTC. If you're looking to sell crypto, for example, you have some Bitcoin or another asset and you wanna sell it out for a stable coin, to then send to an, an off ramp that you cash out on, then we wanna to go to the sell side of the order book right here. And again, you can use a market order. So now I've got some Bitcoin that I bought and I can use that to sell. I can also put a limit order in for a sell. Now, because I'm selling now, my limit order is gonna be above the price. If I put a limit order in below the mid price, then what I'm saying to the system is sell immediately right now if the price is 93,500 or better. Well, you can see that the price is better than 93,500. So it will sell immediately for me and it will take the best buyer, the highest buyer, right? So if I want to actually put a limit order in, I can say 93,000, uh, let's say 94,000 like this. And I can put my sell order in. I'm gonna sell the whole lot, sell BTC. That order is successful, but it hasn't traded yet because my price is now too high for the market. If the market price gets there later, then I'll sell. But I'm gonna cancel this, and if we sell, I'll choose a market order to get the order done straight away. We're gonna sell all of the Bitcoin there, and we're trading it for USDC. So now this trading pair, we've got the Bitcoin, we're selling it for the other side of the pair, which is USDC. You can also choose any other asset as long as there's a trading pair with the asset that you have. Sell BTC, confirm, and immediately that has sold, and that switched the Bitcoin back into USDC. If you want to see an overview of all of your assets on Gate, go down to the bottom right hand corner and click the assets icon. Top left, you can see overview. I've got a balance here. Down here, it says spot account and I've got some money in there. Now, if I go and press crypto, it just gives you a list of all the crypto assets you have and the value of them. And then you can go back to your accounts. Go to spot here in the top right. And here we can click USDC, Bitcoin, and then you have options for the assets. So for USDC, there's actually a simple earn feature. 
And if I want to go ahead and subscribe, that's gonna give me a 1.5% interest rate. Now that's lending on the platform, so other traders will be paying interest, you'll get that interest. I don't wanna recommend this. There are some risks with lending always, credit risk, etc. And you have your assets on the centralized platform there, so just buy beware with all of this stuff. But you can see an overview of all of the assets that you have and which accounts that they're in. And you can transfer between the different accounts. So if you press transfer here, so let's say you've got some assets in your spot account and you wanna put them over to your payment account if you're making a payment on gate. So if someone else has gate, you can very easily just make a, get a payment to them instantly and for free. You can put the assets into there. If you want to trade futures or options, as you can see, you'll need to put the assets into those accounts to go ahead and trade. We can also withdraw assets from the platform if you want to cash out, so send back into your on and off ramp, or if you wanna take self custody of the assets in a wallet that you own, withdraw them from the platform. So in your assets screen, just press withdraw, and it's gonna show you all of the assets that you have. I'm gonna press on chain withdrawal, and it's gonna say, hey, you've got some USDC here, do you want to send that out, or do you wanna send the Bitcoin out? So let's send USDC, and it says the address is needed. So of course, this is the address of either your exchange or the wallet that you own, and press the address where you wanna send it. So we're gonna go back into the other exchange. I'll find the asset that I want to deposit into the other exchange or the wallet. I'm gonna press deposit here and it says, where do you want to uh, deposit it from? So I have to choose a network that both Gate and Binance support because otherwise you'll have an issue, right? If you're sending on a network that the other place doesn't support, they won't be able to make that deposit, right? So we're gonna go over to Gate again and we're gonna see the networks that are supported and you should see here that BNB Smart Chain and Base and Arbitrum, lots of different uh, networks are supported. So I'll just choose BNB Smart Chain to make it easy and then we need to go over to the account and we need to choose BNB Smart Chain here. That's my deposit address. So I'm gonna copy that, go back into my gate account. From here, I can paste in the wallet address that I copied from the exchange that I wanna send it to. So that's the address and the network is the one that I chose, which is available on gate and the other place that I'm sending it. Choose the amount that you want to withdraw from gate, press withdraw, that will send it over the network that you're using and send it into the wallet address that you've pasted in here. Gate also let us set up a Web3 wallet directly in the exchange app, and this is where we can take self-custody of our crypto. Right now, our crypto is in the Gate exchange wallet, and they have custody of it for us. So if we want to take self-custody of it, you may have other wallets that you use, and so you don't need the Web3 wallet, but if you want to make it easy, then you can set up the Web3 wallet right here. So down at the bottom, I'll click Web3 wallet, and you can go and set it up. Now this sets up a wallet for us, and we have control of the wallet, and we have custody of the crypto in here. If you want to send crypto into this wallet, you need to withdraw it from the gate exchange into this wallet. We own this wallet and not gate. Now, you have to back up your wallet properly. If you delete the gate app, you can very easily log back into the exchange account with your username and password, pretty easy. However, you also need to separately recover the wallet as well, and that has its own backup. You can see you have uh, two options. One is to back it up to your cloud account, and the other is to write the mnemonic down individually yourself. Now, it's a list of 12 to 24 words, and that's the backup for the wallet. So even though you log back into your centralized exchange account, you'll have to also log back in to your wallet using those 12 to 24 words that you write down. Do both of them if you want. Now, the important thing here is that you have this backup somewhere at all times, because if you need to back it up, you need that backup. You can't use the gate exchange account. If you have it on your cloud, just be sure that you're okay with that. If your cloud gets hacked or something, then that file can be used to actually recover the wallet somewhere else, and they can spend the assets out of your account. If you write it down somewhere and someone finds it, they also can reload that wallet and spend all your crypto. So you have to keep this super safe. But this is self-custody, where we can withdraw crypto out from our exchange account into our own wallet. So to do that, go to withdraw again, go to on-chain withdrawal, choose the asset that you wanna withdraw, and then up at the top, press Web3 Wallet, and then you can just send it out to your wallet. You don't have to worry about any address, that's gonna be auto-populated. You just have to make sure that when you're sending assets out from your exchange account, that you're using the blockchain that you want to use, and you have your asset in there. I've got loads more tutorials on how to use wallets and blockchains, and so I'll leave those in the description. I'll also leave a much more in-depth guide to trading on gates, both in the spot and futures market in the description if you need that. And the deposit and trading bonus is down there in the description as well. I'm James, this is Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.